to ringside here on ProBox, Europe's number one rated live action boxing program. I'm David Brenner. Alongside me is the former WBA featherweight champion of the world, Barry McGuigan. And it's main event time now, world title action for you, Jake Matlala against Luigi Camputaro. Now then, let's remind ourselves how Jake Matlala won the flyweight championship of the world. Let's take you back to Glasgow on the 15th of May this year when McLala challenged the then champion, Pat Clinton. Now, it was Clinton's first defense of the title and a lot of people thought, well, this was a mandatory, or rather, this was a voluntary defense and McLala wouldn't present too many problems. But I think the term pocket dynamo was coined with baby Jake in mind. He just came forward, came forward, Eventually, second Clinton wore him out and stopped him like this. So, Baby Jake, a world champion, and bringing that world title back to Bafuta Tswana, to Sun City. And here is the little man, one of the very smallest fighters ever to have held world title an accountant by profession studying to be an auditor not the sort of profile you expect from a professional boxer he's a married man a modest man a quietly spoken man and still coming to terms with being a champion of the world yeah it's good for me to be a champion but i would like to be an underdog you know because if you're a champion you have to sometimes you have to become over confident you are always got beaten so I, I take myself as an underdog you know, I'm going to challenge him as if I'm a challenger I'm gonna approach him as a, as, a, as a challenger so I want to be an underdog I don't be I want, don't want to be a favorite funnily enough his challenger Luigi Camputaro is better known in America than he is in his native Italy he's been an Italian flyweight champion but he's learned most of his trade and practice most in the United States but still, he is Baby Jake's first world title challenger. And you never know, he could do to Jake Matlala what Jake Matlala did to Pat Clinton. A sobering thought, but Matlala knows that he's certainly not going to take his opponent uh, For the people of Europe, I can say they must expect a good fight and a tough fight for me. But I am promising them that I will defend my title. You like it or not, the uh, computer uh, has, has to kill me if wants my title. So with my style and experience, I think I'll manage to beat him, then come over to defend you. To any uh, Europe boxer who wants to challenge me. So happy to challenge any European boxer for that world title. Well, I know some who might be queuing up to challenge him, most notably Robbie Regan. But before any thoughts of Robbie Regan or Danny Porter or anybody like that, first of all, Baby Jake has got to get past Luigi Camputaro. Here's Brian Mulder again in the ring. The dignitaries in the ring, Mr. Mike Mortimer, the chairman of the South African uh, National Boxing preview, Board of Control. Jake McLala, Mr. Jerry Woolard, the fight in the supervisor, ring. and Dr. Peter we'll Katana, get a look at the president of the South African enough, Boxing Coordinating for an Council, Italian, he came in wearing the old buck uh, belt. That will a be given to the winner. Based on the stars and stripes, so that might be an indication of where his loyalties lie you. tonight. Lala, a world champion for the first time in front of his own home fans. There's that robe I was telling you about. Would you please put your hands I wonder if we could call him an Italian-American. There is an Italian flag on the back, but the stars and stripes predominate. And we have all the, uh, the usual razzmatazz connected with... Uh, connected with a world title fight anywhere anywhere in the world and Sun City aims to to out glitz and outshine the likes of Atlantic City and Las Vegas and they're doing a pretty good job but the term fabulous is overused but this really is believe me one fabulous resort right now there's uh, the Sun City Golf Challenge going on the richest golf prize anywhere in the world even the guy who comes last gets $100,000 that McGuigan wanted to end up, but they wouldn't let him. <laughs> they had no worries, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, listen, $100,000 for just turning up, Barry. I wish we were on that sort of money. <laughs> this is the WBO Shh. World Flyweight title fight. It is scheduled for 12 rounds. Introducing, on my right, he's wearing the green, white, and red trunks. He weighed in at 50.5 kilograms. Well, there's Luigi Camputaro. With a fight record of Decent record, but fights. he's failed against the very, very highest wins. class. Sugar Baby Rojas has beaten him. Vincenzo Belcastro has beaten him. Champion. And this he's is his first one attempt in at a the world title. All the way from Italy, Luigi Camputaro! A word about his age, incidentally. You might have read in some quarters that uh, his age is in fact uh, 27, well, take it from me, it's 29, he was born on the 1st trunks. of June 1964, not the 1st of June 66, as some record books say. There's Jake McLaughlin's record, 38 victories, He's 9 defeats, just one. one draw on the record. He's the pride of Meadowland Soweto. He is indeed. He's the miracle man from Meadowlands, the champion, baby Jake. All four feet, ten inches of him. And in truth, I think truth to say, Barry, more of a light fly than a fly. Yeah, he weighed uh, eight stone, twelve and three quarter pounds. But um, Capucharo only weighed eight thirteen, so only a quarter of a pound heavier. We want you to make him feel very welcome. Rudy Battle from the United Mr. States referees this particular contest. Please. And we have ringside judges from America, from Germany, and from Belgium. There we go, Aaron Kitzer from the United States, Arthur Ellenson, who comes from Germany actually, not Switzerland, and Andre van Grutenbrühl from Belgium. So, the formalities now are over. And it's time to get down to a little bit of boxing action. The first time that Luigi Campotaro's challenged for a world title. But Belcastro at Bantamweight went the distance but lost on points. So no doubt he's a tough guy and can, if he can hang in there with a the Bantamweight, uh, you know, obviously proves that he's a... Uh, and uh, Belcastro's a tough kid. Boxers, please. please. Okay, gentlemen, you've received your pre-fight instructions. In the event of a knockdown, the boxer standing will go to the farthest neutral corner. You will remain there until I signal to continue. Are there any questions? All right, I'm looking for a good, clean fight. Let's touch gloves. The night of the little big man! And now the venue's filled out. This is the fight they've been wanting to see. Starve of international sporting action for so long those dark days are now behind us and we can look forward to many many world title fights in this magnificent arena i'm sure round one maklala in the white trunks and camputaro my goodness that's eye catching a mixture of the stars and stripes and the red green and white of his native italy yeah, maklala very short at four feet ten and Campitaro should be using his left jab, getting it going, and, and even if he's not a, a boxer, just stepping around him because uh, Matlala likes somebody to come at him or else so that he can actually start fighting with him. You want to step around him and use long, fast punches. If you stand there and fight, and this guy can beat both of the good, feather, uh, good flyweights around, he's a tough little guy. But very short and very light indeed, or very small indeed for the the flyweight division. Oh, good left hook. Isn't that a beautiful counter from little Jake Matlala? Cracker. I well, remember, Barry, we were up in Glasgow for that fight against Clinton, and we both thought beforehand that Clinton would box rings around him. It didn't work out like that. Yeah, well, I'd watched him fight Dave McCauley, and McCauley just picked him apart and just kept chipping away at him. And I thought that uh, Clinton would be able to outbox him. A good left hook again from little baby Jake. Smash and punch. What, he do, what he's doing there, he's just blocking the right uppercut and whipping in that left hook. Good counter punch. He's not really a one-punch finisher. 
and Jake, he sort of wears him down with lots of punches and then eventually sort of chops him to the floor. Midway through round one. Tyler's very square on, Dave. Sucker for that left hook. Trying the body punch that the Thailand should be working on that more, but throwing nice straight punches first because Matlala hasn't got a good reach. He should just throw nice straight, accurate punches, moving side to side. That's better for him. And whipping in those left hooks to the body. Well, they're shouting at him in Italian, so uh, he obviously understands that better than his uh, English. Oh, left hook again. Isn't that a beautiful shot for him? It is indeed. Not a cracking little punch. It's as quick as lightning with it, too. Obviously gained a great deal of confidence as, as a champion, as he became champion. He says he prefers to be the underdog going into these fights. It's going to be difficult when he's there. Not anymore. When he's the champion, yeah. Not anymore. Tonight's show, incidentally, as I'm sure you've probably already gathered, sponsored by Willard Batteries. Out in Bafuta Tswana. Good round, good opening round. Good, crisp, bright opening round. In Sol Kersner's Pride and Joy, Sun City. Just built a new version, it's called Lost City. Not so very far away from here. Get the chance, come out, you'll be uh, you're treated like royalty, you'll live like a king, and you won't believe half the things you see, half the things that Sol Kersner and his team have conjured. Almost literally out of the desert. Pretty even round, Dave, opening round. I, I gave that to Matt Lala because he landed a couple of nice solid left hooks. And although he had his hands up and uh, Camputaro threw plenty of, plenty of punches, uh, the quality punches came from the champion, Matt Lala. Second round then, challenger, Luigi Camputaro in the, in the stripe trunks. Champion, Jake Matlala from Soweto. hook around the side. He should be trying straight punches. Getting nailed every time he stands in front. But Lala's very quick, quick hands. We said before, not a great puncher, but very precise and good accuracy. And he's, he puts them together very well. Just like that. Good attack. Good attack from the champion. And precise is the precise word. Never wastes a shot. And he's cut. McLala left eye, round two. Put below the left eye or in the corner of the left eye. Well, now, this puts a different complexion on this fight. Absolutely, and you, you see that Camputaro coming roaring at him now. He's been gaining confidence when he sees that blood. He's really winging those punches in. Yeah, now we've got a fight on our hands. And Camputaro knows it. Referee Rudy Battle tells him to watch his head. And he's come... And Camputaro's cut left eye now. Both men cut, and we're only in the second. No, well, we're seeing the wrong eye. It's actually the left eye of Kampatara. It looks to be cut, too. Yeah. In fact, that might be blood from uh, Matlala. I don't know. It looked like a cut to me. We'll see in a moment. Good right hand from Matlala. Oh, good left hook, too. That's good stuff from him. He's keeping his composure, despite the fact that the blood is running out of his eye. Kampatara now working the body to... This really puts a different uh, complexion in the fight at all. Ooh, right hand again from Matlala. 
And that's an ugly gash on Maglala's left up. eye. Maglala finishing the round strong, but Kukutaro boxed very well in this round, changed his tactics somewhat. No, the Italian not cut. You're quite right. It, it was just a smear of Maglala's blood on the Italian's head. Slipping and sliding now, and that's what he should have been doing from the first bell. It's a much better round from for Campitaro. I give that to him, and more worryingly is that for Jake's corner is that he's badly cut, very badly cut on that left eye. Well, I actually gave that round even. But uh, it, was a, it was a good round of boxing, one of the better ones we've seen in title fights in recent months. And, well, there's the work going on in the champion's corner. It's, it's at the wrong angle, I'm afraid, for our camera to sort of get round and have a look how bad that cut is. But Rudy Battle looking a little bit concerned there. That's good corner work. They've got, they've got the, the adrenaline on that cut, and they're squeezing it and keeping it on. The other guys are working on Let's have a look at this. Maybe we can see where it happened. Good attack from Jake Matlala. And uh, that left hook, it was, it was on the right-hand side of his face, so that didn't do it. Now. Yes, it was good corner work in the Matlala corner. They dealt with it very calmly and professionally. Third round. Better work. See that right chop and right hook from Capricharo. Trying to get that cut open again. What he needs to do is strike it once or twice again. The blood will start running down his eye. Unfortunately, the adrenaline takes more than 60 seconds. You need three or four rounds, especially with a bad cut like this. Just oh, good attack from Matlala. They haven't been able to stop the bleeding, though. It's a good right hook from Campuchalas. Beautiful punch. Swinging around the side. This is certainly a much more confident Matlala than the fighter we saw in Glasgow. Growing into the world title, perhaps. He's got to keep his composure. He's just got to keep it cool. What he's got to try and do is avoid getting hit with that right hand. And, and the way to do that is to throw more punches or to get off first against Campuchalas. The blood's already streaming down that eye, and, and Capucharo's landed that right hook frequently enough to, to do damage. He's moving his head better, too. These little short, stiff punches of Maglala's. You see for yourselves how many of them land. Never misses. Oh, good left hook again from Maglala. Look at his foot movement, but Matlala's legs aren't great. He just stands there in one position. You know, the, the way to fight somebody is got to stay around him. Don't go trading with him. This is silly of Capitaro. That's the wrong tactics completely. Oh, when he's getting hurt right. here, nailed again. His right, Dave, get, got hurt. But I'm worried about Matlala's eye. Blood really pouring down his left cheek. Yeah, looks, looks heavy to the blood. That's what Campitaro's got to do. Stay on the outside. Don't get involved. Stay on the outside. Let the shots are all oh, good left hook from Matlala. Those are solid shots. Looks like he's cut it's, through it's, the left eye as well. You know, I was just I was just gonna say that. Is, is he uh, is he cut on the below the right eye now? He's certainly cut left eye. So he cut on, is on it, the right is, eye is, as well. Is he, cut, like is he cut underneath the right eye? Looks like it. A little difficult to see from where we're sitting, but it it's, looks suspiciously like it. Good yeah, left hook. hook again from the champion. But this is a better round, a much better round from Cap for Capitaro. He's uh, boxing extremely well. Got nailed again with the right hand. And put the kiss of death on him there. Uh, I tell you what, uh, Jake Matlala looks a sorry sight, doesn't he? Jake? Good left hook again, just on the bell. I give that round to the champion, but that was. Terribly worrying round for him. Look like he got cut below the right eye again, Dave. And uh, as well as the left eye, he got a cut, but looks like he got a cut below the right. It might be that blood just smearing all over him. 
Well, we're in the Italian corner. And uh, some action from round three. Hit him on the punch. Don't wait for him, okay? Keep okay. him, Baba. Yeah. That, that, that's the main thing. Well, there's his cut over the right eye. Over the right eye, side of the left eye. There's, oh, sorry, stay. Actually, the, the left eye cut is not too bad. It's in the corner. But the right eye cut is in a terrible position, Barry. Yes, he's got Freddie King working in the corner with him, too. So they need all the help they can get in that Matlala corner. Those are bad cuts. And he cuts a bad cut, but uh, they're both above the eye, which is which is very, very dangerous and very worrying so early in the fight, running into the fourth round here. Well, it must be worrying for the champion's connections. He is cut around both eyes. He's winning the fight, but he, he's cut. It's a, it's a delicate equation. He's winning it, but there's still lots of time to go here. And uh, I give the champion the opening round, the, the challenger the, the second round, and the champion the, the third round. But it's, these are close rounds. Well, I have to say on my card, I've, I've given all three completed rounds to McLala so far. But uh, I'd agree with you, the last round was pretty close. I thought he just edged it. You would think if, uh, if you were in... Camputaro's corner that you would tell him to stop mixing it with Matt Lala. That's Matt Lala's forte is to, to, to fight sure. for someone to come at him instead of, instead of somebody boxing. That's the way it would frustrate him. He's short, short arms, little pumping, powerful punches. He fights much better on the inside. And, and Camputaro should get off the ropes here because Matt Lala is good on the inside. He works very well. Well, it's, it's possible that Matt Lala's willingness to mix it could be his undoing because it can't be doing those cuts any good. And Matt Lala's got to go looking for him, Dave. He's got to go hunting him down because he's running out of time here. Well, we've got no indication from Rudy Battle yet that he's that concerned. The cuts haven't, haven't been inspected by a ringside doctor yet. And they're Great excitement coming from the Italian's corner. They're screaming and shouting here, keep. And they should be telling him to keep on the outside. He's getting tired, the Italian. And, and Matlala's coming in strong and heavy on the inside. He's working with, look at those little arms pumping. When he gets in close, he just doesn't throw one punch. He throws four and five shots, which is really impressive looking. Good rights, two of them from the champion. And this fight is being fought at a real gallop. Yeah, these guys could fight in their phone booth. There's no need for them to have a big square ri open ring like this, but the Italian should be doing the, the outboxing out here. And staying on the outside, moving around. Getting drawn into the, the fight with Matt Lala. Matt Lala's doing the right thing. He's really wearing him down. Seems to have hurt him in this round. He's little chopping punches. They're doing, doing the job on the Camputaro. Those heads are getting a little close, though. Yep. There was a little clash Good line from just at the end. So four rounds gone. And as I say, no doubt at all. Goodness, he is one less. He really is. Dry the cut, whack on the adrenaline, squeeze it hard. And in contrast, Camputaro and Mark. Dopo il destro, metti il calcio sinistro, non ti ferma sul destro, se no rientra lui col destro. E gira sulla destra, gira sulla destra. Hit him with your right, a destra, a destra. Well, that's the worst cuts on the left eye, so hit him with his right would be the right thing to do, but he's got it. You should be telling him to, to uh, not be mixing it with the champion. He's running out of time, Matt Lala, the champion. He should be just staying on the outside and biding his time and keep chopping away with those quick fire punches. And uh, he can win this. If those cuts get any worse, the referee's going to have to seriously think about stopping this. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. Round five, scheduled for 12. Remember here in Sun City, in Futatswana, at stake, is Jake McLaughlin's WBO flyweight title. 
good hook from Magallo. Really short, powerful little punch. doesn't seem to have the legs to keep moving around now he's uh, he's standing and trading with Matt Lalla and that's not the right thing to do you see when you look at Matt Lalla's legs he he needs somebody to come and fight with him because if he's got to go and look for you he's uh, he's got problems he hasn't got great legs they're very close together and he didn't shift in that well So you pull out, you let your punches go quickly, pull out to the left, pull out to the right. right, but don't stand with him. And this is what Camputaro is doing. He's making the mistake of trading with Matt Lalla. And I have to say, Freddie King's doing a great cuts job. The cuts are still bleeding, but Freddie's prevented them from getting any worse, and that's, uh, that's the most important thing from the champ's viewpoint. Left eye still weeping blood you can see it quite clearly Tower is getting tired his heads are slapping together every now and again and I'm sure some of them are, are, are those head clashes have caused the cut good left hook from Matt Lalla on the inside Watch what Camputaro is doing. He's throwing his punches and he's leaving his head there. He's cut himself now in the right eye. Yes, he is. We thought he was cut earlier. It turned out to be Maglala's blood, but that is definitely a cut. Right eye. Oh, his legs are going. The Italian is hurt there. And no real power behind... The challenges, punches, we're in round five. Just grinding them down here, Dave. Matt Lala's fighting the right fight. He's just pumping away with those short punches. And uh, Camputaro is not moving his head. He's staying in punching range. And he's getting slowly ground down here. The zip seems to have gone out of his punches and his legs as well. Big round for Matt Lala. Yeah. Great confidence round for him. front of McLala's boxing trunks stained pink with his own blood. Well, it appears Camputaro to be cut on the left eye. Beautiful right hook there from Matt Lala. Second one. See how quick he is to, to, to double up on his punches. Really good stuff from him. Tremendously short puncher. Oh, there's, there's Freddie King working on the right eye. That's the worst cut. It's on the eyelid, and, and the blood comes down into your eye and impairs your vision. The cut on the left eye is in the corner of the eye. It's just running down the cheek. Now it looks as though it looks as though McLa uh, Campitaro is cut around both eyes. Now is he? They've certainly been working on both eyes. And a little bit of consternation in the Italian corner. As we come out for the start of round six. Campotaro is moving around, around more. You don't have to be a Sugar Ray Leonard. Just step around the guy. You know, he shouldn't be stopping. Every time he stops a trade with Matt Lally, he gets near. But has he got the legs to be able to stay on the outside? That's the big question. I'm not sure he has. Let's clash again now. strength is carrying him through this strength and a champion's pride I fancy too 
this is a really good fight. They, these guys are not uh, clinging on or holding on the inside. They're really delivering these punches and tucking up nice and tight. And really close fight and really battle has little to do with these guys. Now, this is where Matt Lalo worked great on the inside, on the ropes. Caputaro shouldn't be staying there. He's going to come out second best if Matt Lalo gets him against ropes. He just tees off with those little short pumping punches, switches to the body and to the head. But Caputaro fancies his chances here. He obviously is not afraid to mix it on the inside with him. This really is phone booth stuff. Good stuff. Camputaro forces his way off the ropes. And Matlala tries to force him back. And just for a moment, Matlala's turned up on the ropes. Certainly is. Good fighter. Oh, a left hook from Matlala again. See the chic, the Italian. He comes right back, but... I tell you, the little fella's turning into a pretty good, good world champion as well. Well, he for the first time backs off. That's unlike Matlala, but Puchara is a strong guy. A lot of blood hanging around there. It's difficult to tell which one of these guys is cut worse. Puchara's left eye certainly seems to be bleeding now. Well, both looking a little sorry. This is a good round for. Camputaro, that's his round. I, got, I agree with that, Barry, completely. Camputaro's round. In fact, I have to say that's the first round I've given him. There still is the worry for the champion. The eye. The support from the crowd. This promotion in Sun City and Seoul Kersner's fabulous Sun City Resort. Promoted by Mike Siegel, who we've often seen over here in Great Britain. And Mike has put on a great show. It's sponsored by Willard Batteries. And it's taking place in the Sun City Resort. Good attack on the ropes here from Matt Lally. Started a combination of good right hook, left hook, but Camputara came roaring back. Fought back brilliantly. Well, round seven. And it's getting to the stage as we come into the stretch now where both men will have to dig deep. This is a real physical fight. These guys are standing toe-to-toe -to -toe and they're dishing it out. So, I mean, they're both going to have to be in great condition if they're going to fight like this down to the wire. And the big question mark is, how long will these cuts hang up? So far, the pace has yet to slacken. Oh, this is good stuff round. from Maglala. Yeah, I said in the last round that this is not where Camputaro wants to be, but he fought back very strongly and turned the, the champion around and put him back to the ropes, and Maglala was, wasn't keen to to mix it with him anymore. But he seems to have heard him again. He's taking a bit of a respite and he's coming roaring back at Camputaro. Good attack, pumps away with those short punches. Can throw them all night long. Yeah, he just is a very fit, well-conditioned little guy. Camputaro's corner yelling, throw the left, throw the left, Sinistro. Matt Lala on top here again, forcing the fight. It's one grueling fight, this, it really is. It's better work from Camputaro hitting with two shots and then getting on the outside, but he gets pinned on the rope so often by the champion. 
taking one or two on the gloves, but more than one or two are getting through. Look at the way his head snapping back and jolting back. The champion's getting through all there. And this is his fight. This is the champion's fight. He wants to press this guy back, stay on him, push him back to the ropes. Bob and Weave get those punches off. It was a off. welterweight fight, a 10 round welt. And sheer willpower gets Campotaro off the ropes. You fight at this level, Dave, it's all down to tactics. And at the moment, Campotaro's using the wrong tactics. He may be able to fight with this, with this guy for half a minute of the three minute rounds, but he can't keep fighting like this. Camp Campotaro, it's uh, Matlala's fight. He's winning most of these rounds. He's just chopping away at this guy. Another good round for the champion. And both of them looking a little weary now. Oh, good size crowd here in this arena. Used to, to feature in the lights of Liza Minnelli and, and Frank Sinatra. And great stars of music. And great stars of boxing. Looks pretty tired, Capitaro, doesn't he? Good attack here from the champion. Look at those little short punches, all perfect, perfectly thrown and del delivered, and, and he hit the target. He really is good. So, round eight. Referee's taken a long, hard look and actually kept the. No, break he's out. called a timeout. The bell has gone. Now what has happened? He's called it off, has he? I, don't, I think he has. The challenger is not coming out. It's all over. Well, that's a hell of a, a surprise. Matt Lala was on top. Had won in my on my scorecard. Won five of the seven rounds. And. Um, if he stopped the fight between the seventh and the eighth round. And still, the WBO flyweight champion of the world! Well, it was a sad and sudden ending to what had been a super contest. And I guess, really, Camputaro was, was ground down and sickened and just hadn't enough. Everybody there tonight. And he's in a pretty sorry state, isn't he? Here's Luigi Camputaro. Gave it a good shot, but uh, as, as Barry was saying just seconds ago, we just think he fought the wrong sort of fight. The WBO belt has been tied around Baby Jake's waist. And now Mr. Mike Moore, the chairman of the South African Boxing Board of Control. Puts on the old belt for the champion. Wow. And still Two belts. Get any more belts, we won't be able to see, baby Jake. Yeah, there were plenty of belts thrown in this round. Beautiful uppercut, left hook around the side. Tremendous in combination, punch a gutsy guy and ground down this very tough and worthy challenger, Luigi Camputaro. And that's, uh, well, you can't, you can't blame his corner for pulling him out, can you? Now there's Bert Blewett, who's talking to Baby Jake. Let's go and join him. Okay, with, with his head, but I fought like a, like a veteran. Uh, did that cut worry you a great deal? It didn't worry me bad because I'm used to fight with uh, both eyes cut. No, I'm used to that. I didn't panic. I didn't panic. I fought like a world champion. I said to you this morning. Did he hurt you at all with his punches? No, he doesn't have a good punch. He's a good boxer, a clever boxer, but not clever as, as Jake. In fact. Were you surprised when he didn't come out for the uh, seventh round? I was surprised, but I knew that he won't take, we, we, we went, he went last season because I put a, put a lot of pressure against him. So he can't take pressure. I mean, the altitude and uh, weight problem, I think uh, that's counted against him. Did you think you were hurting him with those right hands you were catching him on the side of the head? Yeah, I, I was at him like, I wish to see that fight on TV, you know, tomorrow. I was at him like, you know, with my left hook and the right hook. Like, those are my best punches. How did you manage to keep up that incredible punch rate? I mean, it was quite incredible. I mean, that's my, that, that's my way, and uh, but... I mean, like I went to you know, you've got to improve your uh, fighting style every time. Each and everybody got to improve. 
dedicate yourself to your sport, stay at the gym, be always you know, uh, fit. Well, does this mean that baby Jack Patlala is going to remain a world champion for a long time? That, that's, that's, uh, I mean, that's, that makes my wish, to remain the world champion for a long time. I mean, after this defense, I'm going to get another two warm-up fight. I mean, two defenses, then we, I go for the bigger one, uh, Michael Kabajal. Well, now you've got those cuts on your eyes. You think they're going to heal quickly? Sorry, Dave, come back, come again. Those cuts on your eyes, what caused them? In fact, the head, you know, because you were fighting like my match type, you get closer to each other. So, he, you know, with his head, he cut me. So, but I knew that I've got a good uh, defense. I'll push 12 rounds with, my, with those both cuts. Well, congratulations, Baby Jack, from all of South Africa. And we, we hope that we see more of you as world champion. Thank you, Bert. Thank you. Well, the most illuminating sight there was the ice pack going on Campataro's right hand. Maybe not the eye, Barry, but the hand. Yeah, it could have been the hand that, uh, that, that eventually stopped this fight. So, the end of a fight, the end of a night that's seen wins for Jake Matlala, for Herbie Hyde, Gary Murray. For now, though, from Sun City, from me, David Brenner, from Barry McGuigan, all of us on Pro Box. We'll see you soon. For now, bye-bye. <laughs>